A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver. The Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of a great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Hey, Silver. Hey! Jed Harrow was the wealthiest and most influential rancher in the Pecos Territory. His sprawling ranch house was the talk of the county, and his spread took in most of the lush valley of the Pecos. It was Jed who addressed the meeting of ranchers in the town hall. All right, boys. Quiet down, so I can get a word in it, As you all know, we met this afternoon to see what can be done about the nesters down the valley from my spread. The sheriff has already asked us to keep from having any violence. And I agreed with him. We got to find a way that'll be peaceful like, but effective. Right. What you got on your mind, Jed? Yeah. We ought to run them farmers. Yeah. Right. Well, Jed's the one they affect most. That's right, boys. I am the one who's most affected. Those nesters have moved in on some of my best grazing land. But I figured out a way to discourage them. Well, what's your plan, Jed? How are you going to do it? Well, you can count on us for help. Boys, if it wasn't for young Frank Wilson, those nesters would get out. But he's the one who talks them in the stead. Run Wilson out and the others will go. Wilson's the hombre you sweet on your daughter, isn't he, Jed? Just leave my daughter out of this. Like I say, I have a way that'll force him to move. It'll cost me plenty of money, but it'll be worth it. Now, here's what I plan to do. I'm having men come in from St. Louis to build a dam in the river just beyond my ranch house. Hey, what for? Hey, that'll take away their water. That's a good idea, Jed. But it's expensive. I'm willing to go to the expense. And by damming up the river at that point, I'll be able to irrigate the land above the valley... So it'll be usable for grazing land. We can save you all that expense by running them out, Jed. Yeah. yeah. Let's burn the places down and make them leave. No, no, no. We promised the sheriff there'd be no violence. I've already hired that St. Louis crowd to build the dam. So that's the way it'll be. They're coming in on the railroad tomorrow. They'll start right away. Damming up that river... We'll profit a good many of you who have your spreads at the head of the valley. Well, if that's the way you want it, Jed. We're with you. How about it, boy? <laughs> fine, fine. Then just forget about those nesties after the dam's built. 
They'll find their land worthless, and they'll have to move on. All right, boys, the meeting's over. That evening after supper was over, Julia Harrow, Jed's 18-year-old daughter, approached her father in the living room. Dad, I want to talk to you. Oh, of course, Julia. What's on your mind? Uh, Dad, I heard about the meeting today. Well, what about it? I heard that you've hired men from St. Louis to build a dam at the head of the valley. That's right, Julia. They'll start work tomorrow. But you can't do a thing like that, Dad. It'll mean that those down in the valley won't have water. Those nesters down the valley have no right there. They can move someplace else where there is water. But, Dad, listen to reason. They built their homes down there. It's all they have. Look, Julia. Did Frank Wilson put you up to this? Trying to talk me out of building that dam I'm in? Frank Wilson is too proud to ask me to do anything like that, Dad. But I'll tell you this much. He won't move... And neither will the others if they have to tote water all the way from town. He's got you buffalo, Julie. I don't suppose you'd understand, Dad. You're too set on business, but... Well, Frank Wilson loves me. He does, does he? Yes, he does. And if you really go ahead with that dam... Well, I... I'll never feel the same toward you again. No, no. Don't say things you'll be sorry for, Julie. I mean every word of it. <laughs> You'll get over it, I reckon. You're young and impulsive. Well, as soon as I you... won't get over it. Dad, you can't build that dam. If you really love me, you won't build it. Because I... Go on. Because what? Because I love Frank Wilson, that's why. Now you know. And if you build that dam, up, I'll... Yeah. This is going farther than I thought. The sooner I get that young upstart Wilson out of the valley, the better. Work on the dam started the following afternoon and continued for many days. And soon the dam was nearing completion. The day before it was finished, two horsemen rode along the trail above the valley. They were the Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Tonto. Oh, 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 oh. Well, that's the reason the riverbed down the valley is almost dry, Tonto. Ah, them Bill Dam cross river, it keep water from people in the valley. Jed Harrow owns that land, most of the valley. He has a legal right to build a dam. The means the people below his spread will have to find other places to live. Their farms will dry up for want of water. Ah, and that's not good. This may result in trouble if the men in the valley decide to fight instead of moving to new locations. Ah. Them have homes built. It's not easy to move someplace else, Kimasabi. Yes, I know. Well, Tonto, we'll make camp in this vicinity and watch developments. If trouble does result, perhaps we can be of help. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scott. It was two days later when the rains came. Rain that seemed endless, a ceaseless, insistent downpour that filled every arroyo and made rushing streams out of tiny mountain rivulets. In the small three-room cabin that he shared with his aged mother, Frank Wilson stood at the window observing the downpour with a certain satisfaction. Well, Mother, if we could count on rains like this, we wouldn't have to worry about that dam Jed Harrow built. We'd have plenty of water for our wants. That's true, son. But this is very unusual for this part of the country. We might not have rain like this for years to come. I know. It's been coming down steadily now for three days. At least this season's crops are assured. That's right, Frank. But the future looks black indeed. The time will come when we'll just have to pack up and move on. No, Mother. I'm going to stick it out. We'll get by somehow. Frank, son, come over here and sit down. I want to talk to you. All right, Mother. Uh, what is it? Frank, I know how you feel about Julia Harrow. I know that's the reason you want to stay here when others are already moving on. It isn't only Julia, Mother. It's the principle of the thing. Jed Harrow built that dam just to run us out. We built our home here. 
We worked hard to raise crops. It's our home. I know, son. But the ranchers hate us nesters. They'll do anything to run us out of this valley. Jed Harrow would never give his permission for you to marry his daughter. I'm sure of that. Julie has something to say about that. I know, son. I know. I'll never leave this valley. No matter what happens or what Jed Harrow does. And that's fine. Meantime, in the Lone Ranger's camp in the hills, the Lone Ranger was preparing supper as he waited for Tonto to return. Oh, scout. Oh, fella. Oh, fella. Oh, oh. You're all wet, Tonto. Better get him some dry clothes. Ah, rain make trail all mud. It has been ah. raining for three days now, Tonto. If this keeps up, it'll be disastrous. Ah, river rising fast. We have to leave trail to get back to camp. You say the river has risen? Ah, up above valley, it break over banks. That's a threat to Jed Harrow's ranch, Toto. He's likely to be flooded out. Me not think of that. I think I'll ride over and see just what the situation is. Uh, me ride with you, Kimasabi. All right, Toto. Here, Silver. <laughs> Big color. Jed Harrow may not realize that because of that dam, the waters will move on his ranch house. Uh, that's right. Come on, Silver. Get him up. Come. Oh, the river is rising fast. If it continues at this rate, Jed Harrow will not only lose his ranch house, but most of his stock as well. Ah, water much higher now than when we see it afore. Better ride over to the Harrow Ranch and give them warning. Ah. And there's no time to lose. Come on, Silver. Let's go. In the Harrow Ranch House, Jed was talking to his foreman while Julia sat near listening. Well, Jim, I understand most of the nesters are pulled out of the valley and going further west. That's right, boss. Your plan worked all right. Guess they're all gone by this time. Uh, you know, boss, this rain keeps up much longer. We're liable to have trouble because of that dam you had built. Well, it won't come to that, Jim. The rain will be letting up before long. But what if it don't? We'll wait till the time comes. Then I'll decide what to do. Jim, what do you mean we might have trouble because of that dam? What I mean, Miss Julie, is that the rains have swelled up the river so much that it's way up over its banks now. With that dam back in the water... Now, now, not... no need to alarm, Julie. If it... Now, who can that be, I wonder? Open the door, Jim. Sure. What the... I want to see Jed Harrow. It's important. Now, listen here, masked man. You come here to... I've no time up... to explain the mask now. Come here to warn Mr. Harrow that his ranch house and stock are in great danger. What's that? Bring that strange in here, Jim. All right, if you say so. Come on in. Thanks. Oh. oh don't be frightened, Miss Harrow. I'm here to help if I can. Help? What are you talking about, mister? What's this danger I heard you mention to Jim? The river's rising fast above your dam. Your wheat fields near the river are already under two feet of water. In another hour or so, the waters in flood proportions will reach your outbuildings and ranch house. Jump into your hush of it. Are you sure? Positive. Bless you, had, Jim. I thought you were keeping tabs on things along the river. Checked about an hour ago, boss. The water was barely over the banks then. That was an hour ago. The waters are rising faster every minute. Jimmy, you say the nesters have left the lower valley? That's right. Are you sure of that? Yeah. A couple of the hands rode that way two days ago. They said the nesters were gone. All right, then. Go get all the hands. The only way to save everything I own is to dynamite the dam. Dynamite the dam? As Mr. Harrow says, it's the only way. It will take fast work to do it in time. I'll help. Thanks, stranger. Get going, Jim. There's not a minute to spare. All right. Let's go, mister. Dad. What is it, Julie? Jim said the people in the valley were gone two days ago, but that's not true. What do you mean? I met Frank Wilson in town just yesterday. He and his mother are still living down in the valley. He told me so. If they dynamite that dam, it'll send a wall of water into that valley. Frank will lose everything. He and his mother may even lose their lives. I warned you about Wilson. Now we're fighting against time to save everything we own, including this ranch house. I know, Dad, but you couldn't think if of... If Frank Wilson's pig-headed enough to stay on when all the others have left, then he'll have to take the consequences. We're going ahead and dynamite that dam. The 
curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. continue our story. A short time later, Jed Harrow joins Jim and the Lone Ranger on a slight rise of ground near the dam. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. Oh, That is over easy, big fella. Ah, things go on, Jim. Fine, Mr. Harrow. Mass stranger risked his neck to place the charge below the dam on the valley side. A couple of the boys has run the fuse to the high bank on the other side. Well, that's good work. They just got over there in time. Water began spilling over the dam in a torrent a short time ago. No one could get across now. You just got out of there in time, mister. We appreciate your help, stranger. Uh, Jim, how soon will they set it off? Reckon they'll be setting it off in a few minutes now. Old scout, open There's it. your Indian open friend. It. Yes. Hello, I was wondering Jim where you... Tubby. Yes? You not let them blow up dam yet. What's the matter, Toto? There's no way to stop them now, Indian. What reason you got for saying they shouldn't set off the blast? Girl, right trail into the valley below. She say Frank Wilson and mother's still there. She go warn them. What's that? What girl's he talking about? Girl from ranch house. He means your daughter, Mr. Harrow. My daughter? Julia? Going down into the valley? Ah. I understood there were no people left there. He said Frank Wilson. He refused to leave. I told Julia to have to take the consequences. Huh? Hey, if I can't get him to hold up that blast, I'll have sent my daughter to her death. You should have thought about the Wilsons before you ordered the dam blasted. Jimmy, stop him. Tell him to wait. It's too late. No way to get across. They wouldn't hear us shouting above the roar of the water. They'll be setting it off in a few minutes. How far down the valley is the Wilson place? About half a mile. Half a mile and only seconds to spare. What are you going to do? Well, keep us happy. I'm riding front. into the valley of the Wilson place, Toto. Wait here for me. Uh -huh. Me be waiting. You'll never make it now. I'd give everything I own to get Julie back safe. Short time ago, you were willing to jeopardize the lives of the Wilsons to save everything you own, Harrow. Well, there's no time to lose. Adios, Toto. Adios, Come on, Silver. Silver. Meanwhile, Julia Harrow drew rain before the Wilson's cabin. Oh, oh boy, oh, steady there. <coughs> Ow! Frank! Frank! Julia, what brings you here? What's happened? My, my ankle. I slipped on the stairs. No, oh, here. Let me help you. No, no, Frank, there isn't time. I'm not going inside. Get your mother. We have to leave right away and go up the hillside. Well, hold on, honey. What's this all about? The dam. They're going to dynamite it any minute, Frank. There'll be a wall of water coming down the valley. We'll all be drowned. Holy Moses. I'll bring mother out. She's too feeble to walk alone. Hurry, Frank. Hurry. There, mother. There. There. Now, you sit with Julie while I get our horse. Two of us will have to ride double. I'll be right back. Julie, girl, you risked your life to come to war. I, I had oh. to come. And well, I... I love Frank, Mrs. Wilson. I know. Our horse, he's gone to the corral. Gone? Yes. Now we have only the one horse for the three of us, Julie's. Frank, we can't waste time. Take your mother up the hillside to safety. Then you can come back for there me. There might not be time. If they blow the dam before I could get back, then you'd be stranded. Frank, I'll wait here while you take Julie. If you don't get back in time, well, I've lived a full life. And no, I no, Mother. Oh. I'll put you and Julie on her horse. You can make it to the hill. I'll try to make it on foot. No one could make it on foot in time in this rain and mud. Oh, Frank, it's I'd It's settled, wish... Julie. We'll have to work fast. 
Now I'll get you both on the horse, and I'll hope for the best. Oh, Frank, please let John, me stay. John, I want you... you to go with Julie. No, it's I... settled. Oh. Now, come on, we have to hurry to get you started. On the trail through the valley leading from the Harrow Place, the magnificent white stallion Silver carried the Lone Ranger over the muddy trail at breakneck speed. The horse seemed to sense the urgency in the voice of his beloved master as the Lone Ranger spoke to him above the pounding of hoofs. Come on, Silver! Hurry, big fellow! In spite of the blinding, stinging rain and the slippery mud of the trail, Silver responded to the Lone Ranger's cry with an even greater burst of speed. And with ears flattened and nostrils distended, the great white horse sped on through the dismal darkness in the race with time and possible death. <laughs> Easy, boy. There you are, Mother. Now you and Julia are ready to leave. Frank! With my sprained ankle, I can't use the stirrups. I won't be able to make any time this way. Please take your mother and let me wait. Honey, we won't argue anymore. You've got to make it with mother. I'll get through somehow. Now, you better be on your way before you... The dam! They've blown it up. Oh, Frank. Oh, oh my poor boy. Go on, get going. The water will be here in a few minutes. Now, please, oh, Julia. Oh, my boy. Oh, easy, silly big fella. Help me lift your mother's my horse quick. I don't know who you are, but... Oh, Easy, oh, Mother. That's it. There you are. Now, oh, Frank, hurry. Get up in that saddle with the girl, then follow me. Right. Oh, Frank, we have a chance. We have, but it's a slim one. Let's get going. One silver. Get up, boy. Get up. Silver, come on, big fella. Just a little further. Hurry, boy, hurry. We'll make it now. I just know we will. I think we'll be all right. This should be high enough. Oh, Silver, hold on. Oh, 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 oh. Listen, the wall of water, I hear it. Yes, that's it, all right. Easy, easy wall. Go back, boy. Easy, boy. Easy, Silver. Oh, my. Oh, oh, easy, Silver. Easy. Oh, easy. It came right up to where we are, Ramon. Our horses are standing in water about a foot deep. Yes, we've been fortunate. Are you all right, Mrs. Wilson? Yes, yes I'm all right, thanks to you, sir. Julie, dear, how are you? I'm all right, too, Mrs. Wilson. Well, we're safe. But everything else is gone. Our cabin, our crops, everything. Don't be bitter, son. It isn't fitting to feel like that when Providence has been so good to us. Sending this, this stranger to us when we needed him so much. We'll ride back to our house. We all need dry clothing. To your house? No, Julie, you mean to Jed Harrow's house. Jed Harrow who tried to run us out, who went so far as... Wait, Frank, to... wait. wait a minute. Remember, Jed Harrow is Julia's father. And I'm sure he's learned his lesson. Ride back to the ranch and see for yourself. Well, all right. But mister, I'm afraid you're making a mistake in bringing us together. Anything can happen. I'll take the chance. Well, we'll go now. Come on, Silver. Get up, boy. Meantime, after witnessing the collapse of the dam, Jed Harrow returned to the ranch house with his foreman and Tonto. While the three men waited for some word from the Lone Ranger, Jed paced the living room, a worried expression on his face. Uh, I didn't think. You're so riled up at those nests, is it? Get them out was all I thought about. Him with the flood threatened to wipe me out here. Uh, well, Tarnation, take it. Why do you keep looking at me like that? I didn't believe anyone was down in the valley. You, Jim, you said they'd all gone. Take it easy, boss. 
Maybe the water didn't catch them. Julie, my, my little Julie. She tried to keep me from blasting that dam. Now maybe. <laughs> you do not give up yet. You, you still think your mayor's friend got through? That, that he got there in time? You wait. 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 It, it's driving me mad, this waiting. If there was something I could do, that with water flooding the valley, it's no use trying to find out what... someone come. Maybe it's them. Hey, hook so I... Open the door, Jamie. It's them. They're safe. All of them. Oh, thank heaven. That little lady is so true. I'll put her near the fire. There you are, Mrs. Wilson. Oh, thank you. Help Julie in, son. Right. Dave. Oh, Dave. Well, well. <laughs> Frank Wilson. Yes, I'm here, Jed Harrow. But I'm not staying, and neither is my mother. The masked stranger insisted we come, but as soon there as we try not... Just hold on a minute. Well? Frank, sir, man. I, I don't know what to say. You have every right to hit me. Frank saved your daughter's life, Jed. She saved ours by coming to warn us. Hey, listen, Frank. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Sorry for everything. I'll I'll get the other nesters back and I'll I'll put up new homes for all of them. And an extra nice one for, for you and Julie. That is, if you ever get around to get married. Oh, Dad, we're already engaged. We get. Will you shake my hand, Frank? Well, I. I. Sure, Jed. Oh, isn't it wonderful? It sure is, ma'am. We're going to be one big happy family from now on. It took that mask, man. Where'd he go? Him and the Indian just walked out while you were all talking. Oh, we owe so much to him. And yet we let him go without saying a word to him. Well, dear, that's the way he likes it. I got to know him a little bit riding with him from the valley. Gee, Julie, honey, we don't even know who he is. <laughs> oh, I guessed that while I was riding with him. I've been around here long enough to know there's only one man with a horse like that called Silver. By thunder, that's right. You don't mean he's a Lone Ranger. <laughs> now, Jed Harrow, what do you think? I'm Silver! The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>